a portion of God's word that we'll focus our hearts on this morning. It comes from Deuteronomy chapter 18. Let's begin with prayer. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always pleasing in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Muhammad Ali knew what it meant to be in the spotlight. Regarded by many as the greatest boxer who has ever lived, he was also probably one of the sport's greatest showmen. With a larger-than-life personality both inside and outside the ring and a penchant for basically saying whatever he wanted to at any point, Ali drew a big crowd wherever he went. And you might expect that for a man who made his fame and fortune with his fists and his mouth, that he would credit his success in life to everything that he did while he was in the spotlight, to all the stuff that he carried out while everyone was watching. And yet I came across a a quote from Ali recently that sheds a, a bit of a different picture on the greatest. Ali once said this, The fight is won or lost far away from the witnesses, behind the lines, in the gym and out there on the road long before I dance under these lights. What he's saying there is his success did not come from the things that he did while everyone was watching. Rather, his success came from everything that he did while no one was watching. All the countless hours of training and practice and preparation that went into preparing his his mind and his body to be in peak fighting shape. Muhammad Ali found that to be true about his mission to become the the heavyweight champion of the world. But that truth is also there for us. As we look to join Jesus on his mission of winning souls for the kingdom of God. You might expect that as the missionaries that we are and called to be by Jesus, the most important aspect of our work is to, to talk. To go out there and to meet people where they are, to to talk about Jesus and the way we talk and how we talk and what we talk about. That it's all about what we say when we're talking to people. And while talking about Jesus certainly is a, a key aspect to being his missionaries, today we're reminded that there's an even greater priority. Before we get to talk about Jesus, we first need to listen to Jesus. See, we need to spend that time behind the scenes when no one else is watching, out of the spotlight, so that we can be prepared and equipped to carry out this mission that Jesus has called us to. It's a priority for us to simply hear Jesus because hearing Jesus is our mission fuel that allows us to join Jesus on this mission. It's the same reason that in Deuteronomy, in our sermon text for today, God makes to his people a promise and attaches a command to it as well. Now, the book of Deuteronomy is basically uh, Moses' farewell speech that he gives to the people of Israel before he dies. At this point, Moses had been God's chosen instrument to lead the people of Israel out of their slavery in Egypt and guide them through the wilderness to the promised land. He had been God's chosen mouthpiece to relay to the people the promises that God had made to them and the commands and the laws he gave them to follow in service to him. And so, as Moses is concluding his farewell speech, he reminds the people and encourages them not to forget, to not forget all of the things that God had done for them, that God had said to them, and that God had promised to them. And as part of that speech, Moses gives one more promise from God to those people of Israel. As our sermon text from Deuteronomy 18 says, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your fellow Israelites. I will put my words in his mouth. He will tell them everything I command him. For the next 1,400 years or so, God kept that promise on a number of different occasions, raising up countless other prophets who would relay messages from God to the people, messages of encouragement and promise as well as rebukes and warnings. And although there are many intermediate fulfillments of this prophecy of prophets that God raised up, there is one ultimate prophet that God was pointing them to through these words of Moses. He was pointing them ahead to Jesus. 
In the book of Acts, there's two separate occasions where Jesus is connected to this prophecy from Deuteronomy 18 as the ultimate prophet that God was pointing his people to. Once by Peter and another time by Stephen. And that certainly everything that is said about this prophet is true of Jesus. Jesus who was raised up from among his fellow Israelites, born as a true human being from the family line of men like Abraham and Jacob and Judah and David, just like God had promised. A prophet who came and and spoke the very words of God that the Father had put into his mouth. And so as the very Son of God himself and as the prophet that God had sent with the words to proclaim, when Jesus speaks, we hear the very words of God himself. And that's why along with this promise of sending this prophet, God also attaches the command. You must listen to him. Because he's the Son of God. Because he is the one who speaks to you the very words of God himself. You must listen to him. And the same command is given to you and me. Especially when it comes to joining Jesus on his mission, we must listen to Jesus. But how do we do that? I'm not saying you need to hear Jesus and listen to Jesus in some sort of mystical, magical way like you'll sometimes hear people talk about. I just could feel it in my bones that this is what God wanted me to do. It just felt so right. This must be what Jesus wants me to carry out. The fact is our emotions and our feelings, they are very fickle and they are very flawed by our sinful nature. Which means that if we try and hear Jesus through our feelings and our emotions, what most likely is happening is we're listening to ourselves instead of listening to Jesus. And so in order to hear from Jesus, we need to look to the God-breathed words of Scripture. Jesus speaks to us today through his word. And we need to hear from Jesus and his word because, again, that's our mission fuel. Like Uh, a distance runner carbo loading the day before a big race or dad gassing up the minivan before you set off on a big road trip hearing from Jesus in his powerful word is what fuels and equips us and prepares us to join Jesus on his mission and again hearing from Jesus it often takes place behind the scenes behind the scenes when when no one is watching and no one is listening But that's when it's most important for us to hear from Jesus because that is what fuels us and equips us and prepares us to be able to go out and then talk to people and show kindness and love to people when people are watching and paying attention to what we say and do. So we need to hear from Jesus because hearing from Jesus is what fuels our mission. How so? I'd say there's really four basic ways that hearing from Jesus in his word equips us and prepares us to join Jesus on this all-important mission of winning souls for the kingdom. First of all, hearing from Jesus reminds us what we need to say when we tell other people about Jesus. That sounds pretty obvious, right? But it's an important aspect of this all because if you ask most people, the number one excuse that they give for why they're not equipped or prepared to join Jesus on his mission, it's because I don't know what to say and that's an understandable catch-up for some people right it'd be pretty hard pretty daunting downright impossible for you to teach a college calculus course if you've never learned more than addition and subtraction if you're a student walking in to take a final exam but you've never before stepped foot in the classroom or cracked the textbook you're probably going to feel unprepared and unequipped to take that test but that lack of preparedness Whose fault would that be? Is that the fault of the teacher? For not giving the knowledge and the information that's needed in order to take that test? Or is it the fault of the student who never prioritized listening to the teacher or reading through the textbook to know what would be on the test? Likewise, if if we're quick to say, well, I don't know what I would say, but never before in our lives have we really prioritized actually reading God's word and hearing from Jesus in the scriptures? Whose fault is it that we aren't prepared for that? Is it God's fault that he hasn't given us all the information that we need to be able to tell people about Jesus? Far from it. It's all right there for you, black and white in scripture. 
Could it be that we're not prepared because we don't know what to say because we haven't prioritized listening to Jesus enough? Because we haven't spent enough time sitting at the feet of Jesus and hearing what he has to tell us. And so we need to hear from Jesus in his word because that's how we know what it is that we need to say when we share him with other people and join Jesus on his mission. The second reason that we need to hear from Jesus is because hearing from Jesus teaches us how we ought to share Jesus with other people. Just hear Jesus as he meets people where they are in their life so that he can tell them the good news. Hear Jesus as he goes and shows acts of kindness and love to people so that that can be a bridge to teach them about himself. Hear Philip offering up the invitation, come and see, to his skeptical friend Nathaniel to come and see Jesus for himself. Hear Peter and Paul and the way that they tie into the context of their audience to build a bridge to talk about Jesus. Friends, as we hear Jesus and we hear his apostles recorded for us in his holy word, we're shown ways that we can also join Jesus on his mission and tell other people about him. Third, hearing from Jesus equips us and prepares us by reminding us why we need to join Jesus on this mission. As we hear Jesus calling us to be a part of this mission, giving us our marching orders as Christians to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, why should we join Jesus on his mission? Because that's what he's called us to do. And as we hear and are reminded that Jesus has saved us entirely by his grace, and we think about the people that God has put into our lives who helped lead us to the word or to the font that brought us to faith in Jesus. Doesn't that motivate you? To go and tell other people to be that kind of a person in the life of somebody else so that they can receive what you have received by God's grace? As we hear and are reminded of the ways that our simple acts of kindness and our gospel witness can have an impact on people around us an eternal impact on people around us. Doesn't that motivate you to do that for those people? As we're reminded that every single person that you meet in your life, every single neighbor that you have, is a soul that is dearly loved by God. Doesn't that make you want to go out and make sure they know that good news? You see, when we hear from Jesus, it serves as our motivation, the why, that we go out and join Jesus on this mission. And then finally, we hear from Jesus because in his word, Jesus gives us encouragement and he gives us reassurance and he gives us peace for the times when joining Jesus on his mission is hard or frustrating or discouraging or it brings about persecution or rejection on us as we do that work. He encourages us that he goes with us. He encourages us that he will give us the words to say. He encourages us that the world hated him too. So we shouldn't be surprised if it does that to us. But I think most importantly, when we hear from Jesus in his word, we're reminded of the forgiveness that he has won for us. The forgiveness he's won for us for all the times that we fail to join him on the mission. For all the times that we avoid it and push it away and do our best to dodge joining Jesus on his mission, there is forgiveness for those sins as well. And I think that's one of the key reasons that God makes this promise to the people of Israel to send them the prophet, Jesus. About 40 years earlier, when Moses had directed and steered the people of Israel to the foot of Mount Sinai, where God, with his fiery presence and thunder and booming voice, proclaimed to them the the law that he had laid out for them to follow in service to him. Moses reminds them now that at that point, as they quaked in terror and fear of God, their forefathers said, Let us not hear the voice of the Lord our God, nor see his great fire any more, or we will die. It's a reaction that an unholy sinner has of standing in the presence of a holy and just God. And yet, God sent a prophet, a go-between who could be the voice that speaks to the people not with terror and fear in their hearts, but that fills their heart with peace. He sends Jesus. Jesus, who through his perfect obedience to the law that God laid out for people to follow on that mountaintop, lived the perfect life that you and I can't. 
Jesus, who through his suffering and death on a different hilltop, paid for all of the times that we fail to live the life that God has laid out for us to follow, has won forgiveness for every single one of our sins. And so when we hear the voice of Jesus, the great prophet that God promised to send for his people, we hear a voice that shouldn't fill our hearts with terror and fear, but a voice that fills our hearts with peace and reassurance because we have a Savior. Because he faced the wrath of God, we don't have to. And so that fills us with that peace and that comfort and reassurance that then, again, circularly motivates us to go out and share that good news with everyone else that lives in fear and terror. To share with others the good news that you know, that you've received because God sent Jesus to be not just your prophet, but your Savior. So friends, keep hearing from Jesus. Don't say to yourself, ah, I go to church every once in a while. I go to Bible study every once in a while. I crack my Bible once a year or so. I went to confirmation class when I was in seventh grade and eighth grade. I did that a long time ago. I don't need that kind of stuff anymore. No, keep hearing from Jesus. Keep hearing from Jesus. Isn't it telling that in our culture today, in our society, most employers are going to offer opportunities for continuing education for their employees? Isn't it telling how much money and how much time is spent every year by Americans to pursue further education and get a higher degree, their master's or their doctorate or whatever it might be? Isn't that telling that deep inside we know that in order to best carry out the missions that we've been given, we need to keep growing and keep learning more and more? And isn't that absolutely true? to carry out the mission that Jesus has given to us, that we need to keep on growing, that we need to keep on learning and strengthening our faith. If we know that in a secular culture with our jobs, can we apply the same thing to our faith? So friends, don't think that you're done. Keep hearing from Jesus so we can better and more consistently join Jesus on this mission that he's called us to carry out. Now, as I finish up, I just want to Maybe give me a couple of practical pieces of advice and encouragement for how you can better hear Jesus on a regular, consistent basis. First of all, keep doing what you're doing right now. What better place for you to hear from Jesus than the place where his word, where he speaks to us, is preached and proclaimed and sung and received in sacrament? Keep coming. What better place to hear Jesus speaking to us than on Sunday morning Bible study when we get to sit at the feet of Jesus and dig more deeply into his word that he wants us to know? What better place to bring your children so that they can cultivate a habit of listening to Jesus from early on and have that carry through for the rest of their life as they hear from Jesus in his Bible stories? But maybe even more important than that is to understand that hearing from Jesus doesn't just have to be contained to an hour or two on Sunday morning. You can hear from Jesus 24-7, 365, and we should. You see, if you can cultivate a, a devotional life, a routine and a habit of being in God's word and listening to Jesus at every opportunity that you have, think of the impact that that could have on your spiritual growth. I think all of us have one of these, right? Most of us do, probably. Now, I, I would guess... That if you think about it, you spend at least hours on this device in the course of a regular day. How much time do you spend on it reading the Bible? You see, there's this really nice app on there called the Bible app. And you could take five to ten minutes of your day, and instead of scrolling aimlessly through your Facebook or hitting refresh on your work emails to see if a new one has come in or playing the day's latest word, Wordle puzzle, Maybe instead you could take that five to ten minutes just to let Jesus speak to you through his word. Think of the impact that could have if you cultivated that daily routine of hearing from Jesus. Or maybe you're more of a tactile person. Maybe you sit down at your desk right away in the morning. You're going to tune your instrument before the orchestra begins. Right? You want to start out your day in the word of God. And you sit down with your Bible and you buy a little devotional notebook that you can have next to it. And you dig out a chapter of scripture and you read through that and you ask yourself as you're reading it four questions 
that Martin Luther posed to us. As you're reading that chapter of scripture that you want to set aside and meditate on for the day, you ask yourself these four questions. One, what is God saying to me here? To dig deeply into your brain and your heart and say, what is Jesus saying to me here through his word? To apply it to your circumstances in your life. What's Jesus saying to me here? Second question, what does that lead me to confess? As the law pricks your heart and shows you your sin, what do you need to confess before God? Third question, for what does that lead you to give thanks? To think about your life, to think about the blessings that God has poured out to you in in connection with that text and just in general. For what does this word of God lead you to give thanks? And finally, four, for what does that make you pray? So you take those four questions and you think about them as you're reading through this section of scripture. You can write it down. You can take notes if you want. But think through those things. What is God saying to you through his word there? And then you take those questions that you've asked and the answers that you've come up with and you pray that back to God. Right? So you spend time listening to Jesus and then you spend time talking to Jesus. And I would guarantee that if you do that, if you develop a devotional habit where you are spending daily time in the word of God, you will see yourself feeling more confident, more prepared, more equipped to be able to share the good news of Jesus with people around you in your life when God puts you in the right place at the right time to do just that. Now, admittedly, this might not be the most exciting part of joining Jesus on his mission, Or you get revved up for thinking about things like what apologetics arguments can we use to try and defend our faith to skeptical people? What Bible passages can we be quick to quote and throw back at people if they come against us with certain things? How can we know best how to talk to other people? And that certainly is good. Maybe sitting down by yourself behind the scenes when no one else is watching to dig into the word. Maybe that's not quite as exciting, not quite as grand. But I can tell you that there is nothing more important in preparing and equipping you to join Jesus on his mission of showing the love of Jesus in your words and actions to the neighbors that God has put around you than simply sitting at the feet of Jesus and letting him speak. Listen to Jesus. Hear from Jesus. He's got a lot to say. Amen.